Have you ever considered signing up for a course, but then hesitated or changed your mind because you saw the course number? You are not alone. I have students in my office all the time asking questions about course numbers. I'm a freshman. Does that mean that I should only be in 100 level classes? Or that's a 400 level class, I'm only a sophomore. Okay, that was not a question, but you get the idea. There are many questions that students, especially new to college students, have about course numbers. And so let's spend a little bit of time walking through the basics here. Now, as always, what I am sharing is generally true, but there are always exceptions. So be sure to talk with your academic advisor for specific questions about your university's offerings. So let's jump in. Let's start with this 100 level or some places 1000 level set of courses. Usually these courses are introductory. They're more likely to be larger classes, involve more lecture, be textbook based. Often they assume very little background knowledge, which is great if you're just testing out different areas, especially if you're still deciding on a major. 100 level courses are a great way to get a broad picture of a field and start to see if this is something you may or may not want to do. Exams are largely multiple choice and there's usually not too much in the way of writing here with the exception of writing classes at the 100 level where you can expect to do more writing. Most often, 100 level courses are general education courses, meaning they check off some of those gen ed core boxes, or they are first level major courses. And although freshmen may feel most comfortable taking 100 level courses, 100 level courses can be taken by anyone. When I teach Psych 101, for example, at least half the class is usually freshmen, but then there's always a significant portion that are sophomores, juniors, or students seniors knocking out those gen eds. Moving into 200 level courses, these are most often lower level courses for majors. Often these serve as prerequisites. So a prerequisite is any course or set of courses that you need to take before you are allowed to enroll in upper level courses. So many majors have a certain set of courses they need their majors to take, and then they know they have the background knowledge to move into and be successful in those upper level courses. So very often those foundational classes that set majors up for success are at the 200 level. In psychology programs, for example, these are often classes like probability and statistics or next level up survey courses like lifespan development or social psychology that are still surveys of a relatively broad area of psychology, but more specific than that 101 intro course. Now again, although you might think 200 level is a sophomore level course, this isn't always the case. Students who have declared a major in their freshman year very well could start taking those 200 level courses in their first year, especially in that second semester, so that they're ready to start taking more upper level major courses sooner. This is where you'll usually discover your major cohort. That is the set of students you will be moving through your program with and taking all of your major courses with as you move through your degree. All right, so once we get to the 300 level, we start to get serious. 300 and 400 level courses are collectively called upper level courses. And this means that you're expected to have some background understanding of the topic going into the course. Usually 300 level courses are major centric courses or courses specifically designed to serve an upper level gen ed requirement. Usually the assumption is that if you are taking an upper level course in your field, you have at least one 100 or 200 level course under your belt. And that's often why upper level courses have 
prerequisites. Now, as we get into upper level courses, class sizes start to get smaller and classes start to shift from more lecture based to more discussion or project based. Now, although you still may be using a textbook as the primary reading material in a 300 or even a 400 level course, very likely you will also start to see supplemental reading materials here. So these are things that are field specific, but these may be original documents. These may be classic literature pieces. These may be original research articles that supplement the general information you are getting in your textbook. And these supplemental readings usually require more intensive reading and comprehension skills than textbooks do. And this can often throw students for a loop when they're first starting to get into these non-textbook sorts of readings. So just be ready for that. Upper level courses are also where you'll start to see a shift in exams. So although usually there are still exams, especially at the 300 level, often these will involve more essays, more case studies, more long form problems than those multiple choice exams you usually see in those introductory classes. And what this means is that there is a different type of studying required. And if you want to learn more about that, make sure to check out this video over here about mistakes I see students make when it comes to studying for exams. Now, assuming those prerequisites have been satisfied, students in any year may find themselves in a 300 level course. Although it is less common and less recommended for first year students, the exception being if you brought in a lot of credits, whether through AP courses or through a Running Start program, taking courses at your local community college. All right, moving into the 400 level, this is where you really start to get into classes that get you ready for the field. There tend to be more skills-based, more practical, more applied. Often students are really thankful getting into some of these courses that they can see the straight lines from what they're learning and what they're doing in class to what they want to do after graduation. And that's very exciting stuff. Now, although some 400 level courses are more intense or more specific continuations of lower level content, many 400 level courses are specifically designed for seniors who are about to launch into that big wide post-graduation world. The 400 level is where you will usually find subject specific seminars, project-based capstone courses, senior research placements and internships, and career readiness courses that will really help students develop resumes and those essential skills needed for their chosen career path. These senior specific courses are usually much smaller and require much more time and effort than lower level courses. Now, sometimes there are still exams and even textbooks at the 400 level, but often grades are based on thesis papers, research proposals, capstone presentations, and less on exams. So don't let senioritis, which is very real, keep you from maximizing these senior courses because they are often where you will build the most real life tools before graduation. So you really want to make the most of them. Now, real quickly, I wanna to touch on courses numbered above that 400 level, so 500 level and beyond. Usually anything numbered above the 400s or the 4000s is a graduate level course. So it's pretty rare that as an undergraduate student, you will need to be registering for these classes. But there are a couple of exceptions that are good to be aware of. First, your institution may offer cross-listed courses. So you may see a course numbered, for example, 430 slash 530. This means that it is listed as both an undergraduate course, 430, and a graduate course, 530. And what this usually means practically is that you have both graduate students and undergraduate students taking the same course together, but the assignment requirements and the grading is different depending on if they registered under the 500 graduate level course number 
or the 400 undergraduate level course number. When I have taught a cross-listed course like this in the past, the graduate level students had to do more intensive paper and presentation assignments than the undergraduate students did. The second exception to undergraduates potentially registering for graduate level courses is if your institution offers what's called an accelerated degree program. Often this looks something like you graduate in five years with both a bachelor's and a master's degree. And in this case, you may find yourself needing to register for 500 level or graduate level courses while you are still technically an undergraduate. Now, if you think that you need to register for a graduate level course as an undergraduate student, make sure to talk with your academic advisor. They would be able to tell you all the ins and outs of that at your institution. All right, there you have it a quick introduction to college course numbers. If you have any follow-up questions on this topic or want to share any of your experiences, please post in the comments. And of course, if you found this video helpful, please smash that subscribe button. I will see you all next time.